And there's this mode of thinking where, well, these things are smart and these are like humans and these are, you know, close to AGI and whatever else somebody somewhere says. But the reality is that these are, you know, large language models based on a transformer architecture. They have a certain way of taking the context that you put in and producing something. And they cannot do everything. They don't know everything. You have to know about what goes into the context and what shouldn't go into the context to not derail them. So there is a learning curve, but it's not something that somebody tells you on the website, you know, like, hey, you got to learn this, you know, mm -hmm. because nobody says we have, a, we have a learning curve. That's amazing because the last 20 years of software has said learning curves are bad, you know, saying yeah. this as a Vim user, you know, like learning curves are <laughs> Do you even use Vim anymore? I hear the ID is dying. I mean, don't you just uh, I, let the let amp take the wheel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's that's a hot topic. Like I said, this. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I know it is. I've been bringing it up nonstop. Yeah. Do you use Vim or not? Yes or no? Yeah, exactly. Not anymore. I use my amp the Vim mode in VS Code, but I don't. Honestly, I don't type that much code by hand anymore. Like right. it, it's truly crazy. I. I mean, say that again. I just, uh, say that one more time, clear. Okay. So, the journey, in some sense, of the last one and a half years was that I, I worked at Saucecraft. I wanted to try something else. I wanted to go as hardcore programmer as I can. And I went to Zed and we built a text editor in Rust from the ground up with our own, you know, GP. GPU framework and whatnot. That's truly some of the best programmers in the world work in that team. And it's truly a, an amazing product. It's amazing code base. I feel like I've reached the core of what programming can be. But then over the year with AI getting better and then trying out stuff like back then, like Cursor Tab, where I was sitting down and I, I just want, we were building the completion for Z. So I was working on that, the tab completion, the fancy AI completion and figure out what the competitors are doing, you know? So I tried out tab, a uh, cursor tab. And I was sitting there and I would change a switch statement or whatever it was, like some repetitive thing where back in the day, I would have been so proud to pull out an amazing, impressively good Vim macro and I would just start typing like a console log or something in one of the switch statement cases. And it would say, oh, you want to add this down here too? Tap. You want to add this too? Tap. Tap, 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 tap. And I hit tap 10 times and it had the whole thing. And I sat there thinking, damn, like this is faster than I will ever be. Like all of the Vim, you know, I'm going to use Colmac and I'm going to use Quickscope and Vim and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you now have models that are faster than you at doing this. If 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 you have like a CSV file or something and you, I don't know, remove the last column, I would have done this, you know, selecting normal mode, jump to the end, delete, blah, 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 or a macro and repeat it for 990 times and whatnot. Now with these models, you could just remove the first column, second column, it would go, you want to remove all of the column, like the last column, tap, 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 tap. And I was like, that's crazy. Like that changes a lot of things. And then I worked on the Z completion and we built this ourselves. And I realized I'm not an ML guy. And Antonio, the guy I worked with, he's maybe the best program I ever worked with, but he's also not an ML guy. But we could build something of equal quality as Cursor Tab was. And I was sitting there thinking, this truly is going to change a lot of stuff. Like if, if, if like an open source model, like you can use a Quen or DeepSeek or whatever, if you can turn this into a completion model that edits code faster than somebody who's really good at Win, myself, right? If it's faster than I, I can be, like that has to change stuff. That has to change stuff in Death Tour. And then after that moment, I had this thought of like, you know, I don't know how to phrase this in a, in a way that doesn't offend anybody, but, um, go ahead. This thought of. Offend away. Are the, yeah. Am I working on a horse carriage, you know, like by working on a text editor? Am, am I, am I oh, working? Dang. On, I don't mean it, you know, but it's just, this like, <laughs> it's a really good text editor though. You know, it's really it good. Is. It's an amazing product, but it's just this, I've worked in the Vim mode with Conrad at Z and I was like all of that stuff. And it's amazing. But then you're like, 
I want to be efficient, you know, at the end of the day. I don't, I'm, I'm not somebody who loves programming and being fast at stuff because of macros and key bindings. I like doing stuff fast. Like I like right. being efficient. And now suddenly I realized that all of my Vim macro stuff was kind of invalid, you know, because I could just tap, tap, tap in another editor to get rid of this brute force, whatever, you know, chores. And that changed a lot of stuff. That changed a lot of stuff with how I look at developer tooling. And then basically I, you know, just to round this up, I looked at different other companies and talked to different other people. And then I ended up coming back to Sourcecraft because I talked with Quinn and I told him everything I just told you. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> everything is changing. He's like, you want to come build the future here? You know, like, I agree with you. Like a lot of stuff is changing. So yeah, that's, and now I'm, I'm working in VS Code, which I've never wanted to do. And I don't like VS Code, like aesthetically, I don't like it, but it's yeah. just, I also realized I don't care that much anymore. And then I thought, am I the leper here? Like, is this, what's going on? And then I talked with a bunch of other people, colleagues at Sourcegraph and people I met in San Francisco or at conferences, and they use AMP2 or they use Cursor, Windsurf. And, and there was at least five of them that said, I was a hardcore Vim person. But I switched to using VS Code, Cursor, whatever, because I realized it's just a 10x multiplier and the other stuff doesn't matter that much anymore. And if you were to ask Primogen or TJ or whatever, they would give me for saying this, of course. But it's I had this feeling, and a lot of other people have this feeling too, that the the age of fast mechanical movement in an editor it's kind of over when you have like these malls that, you know, are much faster than you. And when you project out the future that these things are getting faster and cheaper and that maybe surely you will have this running on your laptop. Right. And then it's like, instead of having your Vim key bindings and Colmac and a split keyboard that you can put up vertically or whatever it is, you just talk to your computer. Maybe, I don't know, but sure.